I'm wondering, Geo, maybe dedicated gear collecting machines are going to go extinct with one of these new 5-axis machine tools. Let's have a quick look. So we're here at Paddock Gears. Now we're in front of a Takuma UR1000, which they've just bought to help make their parts. Now, what kind of parts do they make? What requirements have they got? Well, Rowan, here at Paddock Gears, they make very specialised components, predominantly large components, but also small components too. These components are made from very hard, um, exotic uh, materials, um, and they do a lot of gear work, um, you know. A lot of jig boring as well. Jig boring as well. So the, the, the components that you see here, unfortunately, we can't show them all due to NDAs, but they're some of the nicest um, components that we've, we've had the pleasure to see. I've, I've not seen better, better components probably in the past couple of months at least, definitely. Now, this machine is, it's got 24,000 RPM spindle, but actually the key kicker here is the, the beautiful, massive C-axis rotary table and the, and the extra axis you get on the head to allow you to do five axis machining. Absolutely, and, and not to mention, you know, the torque of this machine, you know, 42 kilowatts continuous, I believe, Rowan. Yeah, which normally you don't get for 40 kilowatts, you might get as like an S6 value, but 42 kilowatts continuous, absolutely huge. It's phenomenal, and all these um, uh, factors contribute to the rigidity of this machine. But let's start at the, at the foundation. This machine weighs 28 tons. It's such a rigid machine, dual column um, construction. And, and, and it's got the C axis on this particular configuration um, with a fifth axis um, swiveling head. But there are three different types of configurations dependent on um, the customer's um, applications and requirement. Powered by the lovely Hydenine control system. Yep, and new TNC640. And you can tell us all about that in a minute when we discuss the, the gear programming. And, and the accessibility to this machine tool is also excellent. When you open the door, we, it also, we, we it also, opens, also opens the roof. We've got Brilliant. to be a little bit careful here um, showing the component, so we might have to blur that component out. But you can see the accessibility, the ergonomics of this machine tool are absolutely... So um, your crane comes in, drops whatever heavy components you've got. It's designed so well. This particular fifth axis con configuration is not like many that you see out there or a typical fifth axis configuration. You know, the, the spindle is going to the part rather than the part going to and the these spindle. these are quite heavy parts. So actually the C-axis on the rotary on the, on the table, not, with not a tilting on the table, means that you've got, you can spin the part, but you're not tilting it. There's no awkward forces on the casting. Absolutely. The machine don't get the wear that it would do in, uh, in, in that kind of configuration. And also loading them heavy parts, you don't want to be throwing them around. You've got more kind of speed and, and, and accessibility to that part with this configuration. The, the swarf, how the swarf is, is being removed from the, the machine tool. chip augers going back to a, uh, a chip conveyor. Let's talk about the operations on the parts that Paddock are, uh, are, are doing right now. Now, we've got, on this component now, which we can't show you unfortunately, we've got some helical splines, which are done with a form tool, which is a really quick operation. It literally, for each spline, it's a single pass. For me, I'm pretty amazed at that, especially in these harder materials. There are also machining spur gears, which I wasn't looking when they made, they've only made a couple of um, teeth already, but I think it sounded like they were doing that in one pass as well, which they're quite deep, deep spur gears, about that deep and that wide. So it's a lot of material they're taking out in a single pass. It's just a testament to the power in that spindle. Absolutely, Rowan, and I think that you've hit the nail on the head, really, in regards to the capabilities of this machine. As you mentioned in, in, in your intro, you know, they've got dedicated gear cutting machines. So is that how they were site. making these before? Absolutely. So they were shaping the gears on the dedicated gear machines. Now, they've introduced the Takumi um, as well as some other machine tools and they're actually machining um, the gears. Not only machining the gears, but machining the gears more accurately, accurately and with a better surface finish. And as you mentioned again in the intro, they're also doing the jig boring on, on, on it, in the same operation, so saving operations, saving that component going from one machine to another machine and keeping the relationships between the holes or the bores and the gears very accurate. So if I was, op if I was an operator, I would probably maybe consider jig boring, helical gear cutting, spur gear mach machining to be maybe three very different operations, three very different requirements, maybe requiring three different machines. But on this Takumi, you can do all three and you can do it in one setup. There's, there's obvious, obvious benefits from that. One setup time, not three. 
you've got uh, reliability, quality of uh, tying up tolerances between those three different setups, you've got three different stack ups of tolerances. So there's obvious benefits to, to using one of these machines. Absolutely, I think it doesn't just lend itself to this type of application, but a multitude of different applications. And it's a really clever um, design, and I really like the construction. I think this is the first time that you've seen a Takumi. This is my and, first time. And, and what do you think? What, in your opinion, what do you make of this machine tool? Well, I now know that maybe they do make some smaller ones, but knowing that this is the big, big Takumi I've seen, if someone then says, "Oh, we've got a Takumi on the shop floor," I'll hope it's something as big as this, because <laughs> I'll definitely be just as impressed. And and Hide and Iron Control. I used to use Hide and Iron one when I was on the shop floor. It was one of my favourite control systems. Can you tell us um, about this control system, Rowan, and 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 what you like about it? And how easy it is to program the helical gears. Yes, yeah, so I was talking to one of the operators and he obviously said the Heidenheim, one of their old machines with the Heidenheim, the new ones are Heidenheim, he said they just love how, how easy they are to use, there's, a, there's that ease of use, the operator experience, but they actually program the helical, uh, helical spurs online, that means without cam. So they have a special little uh, calculation, they do, I guess it might be an Excel spreadsheet for all I know, where they take the spur gear, the angle, the lead, um, and the diameter out from the center. And that gives them an incremental angle that they can program in with just a single line cut move in Heinlein. You just do a line cut, simple, which takes out all the complexity of using CAM, all the complexity of post processes. And that means that actually, on the shop floor, the guy can actually program these helical spurs, which are such complex, looking at them, such complex features. I'm really impressed. Control, machine, working in harmony. Rowan, it's been an absolute pleasure reviewing this machine with you. You also do power skiving on this machine to create gears. This is their second Takumi now, the first one being the UR600, and they've got their third one on order due to the success of Takumi and how it's kind of eliminated backlog that they were getting. It's transformed their business. So, so you think this has made dedicated gear cutters extinct? They'll always have their place, but definitely an argument to say that this is the future.